أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا سمعوا ما أنزل إلى الرسول ترى أعينهم تفيض من الدمع مما عرفوا من الحق يقولون ربنا آمنا فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. In the short message I'd like to share with you a very brief story uh, of uh, something that happened while I was in London. I was visiting London recently. I gave a lecture about the Quran and a young lady came up to me and told me that she's been looking into Islam. She's been watching a lot of my videos and other resources and you know she she wants to accept it but she's not sure about it. And I asked her, well, what is, what is keeping you? Why aren't you sure? And she said, I don't know. And I said, well, no, I'd, I'd like you to think about it and give me a clear answer. What exactly is holding you back? And she thought about it for a few seconds. And then she told me it's maybe how her parents are going to receive the news, how her friends are going to be shocked, how, you know, it's going to be a lot of change in life. It's going to be hard. And I heard all of those things and I told her, uh, you know, it's all in fact going to be hard and it's not going to be easy and all of those are legitimate concerns. Your parents are probably going to really not take this well. Your friends are probably going to be pretty shocked. You're also probably going to feel very, very isolated and life is going to change in the beginning at least, not for the better but for the worse in many, many ways. It, it, this is all true and these are all legitimate, legitimate concerns. But I told her, just one thing I can offer you, the peace that you are going to feel in your heart the tranquility that you are going to experience, that you have never, ever experienced, ever before. You know, all of our relationships that, that exist with other people, on the one end, and the first time you build a real bond with the one who created you, and the one who's been taking care of you more than anyone else, all along, you actually directly connect yourself to him. The peace you will experience, let me tell you, all the price you're going to pay is worth it. And as I said that to her, she started tearing. She just started crying. And I asked her, you know, you know why you're crying? And she says, no, I don't know why I'm crying. And I said, because you're saying you're not sure about Islam, but you've actually already accepted it. The Islam is actually accepted in a person's heart. And when the heart accepts Islam, the tears come out. It just, they just come out. You can't even help it. She starts crying even more. And I said, you know, when you cry, you remind me of something Allah said in the Quran. And I recited this ayah to her, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ When the time came that they heard what was revealed to the messenger, تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ You're going to see their eyes overflow with tears. مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ As a result of what they recognize out of the truth. In other words, they hear the revelation, they recognize it to be true, and they just can't even help themselves. يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا they say, Master, we've come to accept. We have believed. Please write us in, record us among those who bear witness. In other words, among those who bear witness to the truth. So I share a piece of this ayah with her, a little bit of the Qur'an. She starts crying even more. And then she says, how do I take shahada? And she did, right then and there. Just last week, I was in Milwaukee. I met another young man. He told me, uh, you know, he works at a bar and he's been, in his free time, he's been watching Qur'an videos, and he's been watching a lot of my stuff, and, you know, his friend became Muslim, and he's been thinking about it, but he's not sure. And he's, I sat him down too, and I said, you know, well, you're already praying five times a day, because he was. You're already attending the prayers. You're already reciting the Qur'an. You're already, you've, he already knew how to say the shahada. He had memorized it already. But he just wanted a little bit of an encouragement to, you know, just come in. You know, but that, that moment when you take the shahada, for those of you that have, you know the kind of peace you felt. You can't even describe it to anybody else. It is something between, that joy is something like a secret between you and Allah. But from that point on, challenges come. You know, but whether they come from family or they come from friends or they come from the job or they come from your social circle, they will come. They might be, you know, emotional in nature. They might even be financial in nature. There might be some serious, serious challenges that come your way, but that is Allah's way of testing whether or not this statement, this declaration you made is worth it to you. What are you willing to pay for it? What are you willing to suffer 
to hold on to this because he wants to know the value of those words to you. These aren't just words you say and get a walk away. You, these are words you say and you prove their worth to Allah. And then when you can go through a little bit of that test, you will see Allah open the doors of tranquility and ease and peace in your heart like you never, ever, ever imagined before. You know, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ In Surah Al-Ankabut, the 29th Surah, Allah says, Did people assume that they're going to just accept the faith? And they're not going to be put to serious test? You know, yuftanun, the word used for they're not, did they assume they're not going to be tested? So the Arabic word for tested, actually, the one chosen in Arabic is for uh, when gold is put under high temperatures so that its impurities come out. It's like Allah is comparing you to gold. In other words, Allah is saying you're valuable. And when gold is refined, you can't just scrub it and wash it. You have to put it under intense heat. Because it's a valuable metal, it's so dense that its, in, that its impurities are so deeply embedded inside it, it takes time and a lot of heat to get it out. So when you're in the hot seat, when you're going through a tough time because of your Islam, it is because Allah considers you gold. And these tough times are going to refine you and purify you and make you a, a better believer than you ever imagined. So this is part of the journey to Allah. Accept it, embrace it, and you know, feel happy about it. And as you go in this journey and feel kind of lost and alone, just understand, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ فِي الصَّالِحِينَ This is the last thing I'll share with you. Those who believe and accept, you know, those who've accepted the faith and did good deeds thereafter, then Allah says about them, we will enter them. Absolutely, this is my promise. I, I, we will certainly enter them into the company of the righteous. In other words, you're going to lose some friends, you're going to lose some relationships, some things will not be the same as they used to be before, but Allah will replace them with new relationships, with new bonds of love, with new bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood that you could not have imagined, and the sincerity and the love you will feel will more than compensate for the losses you felt at one point. You know, and Allah will soften your heart and others' hearts towards you just because of the beauty of this faith. I pray Allah gives you more and more strength as you progress in this journey. Thank you so much for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.